So the Horticulture Innovation Lab. Uh, we build international partnerships for fruit and vegetable research to improve the livelihoods in developing countries. And I serve as the director of that program, and it's based at the University of California, Davis. Uh, why horticulture? Uh, well, we believe that horticulture is uh, important because it's a high value crop. And so it has potential for income generation and also income diversification. Uh, it can be um, grown on a small plot of land and still make a reasonable income. Of course, we know about the nutritional benefits of fruits and vegetables. And it's a women's crop, and so it has um, potential to help empower women and their families. Uh, the Horticulture uh, Innovation Lab has only been in existence for four and a half years. Uh, but we've had a lot of different research projects over that time. We started off very broad, um, looking all the way from seed systems, uh, seed drying, a variety evaluations, all the way through to post-harvest handling um, and market development. Uh, just, I'm going to mention just a couple projects real quick. I actually just at the break was meeting with the local collaborators for this project that's led by Kent Bradford out of UC Davis looking at drying beads made out of ceramic that are um, used to dry seed to maintain their quality and viability over time. Uh, we're also, looks like everything shifted around in there for some reason. Apologize for the picture over there, but um, we're using them to dry vegetable seeds, but the collaborators were just telling me that they're also, in, to try and get this um, scaled up and make it viable, they're also looking at applications with maize and other cereal crops, um, because that, that'll mean there's more uses uh, for the beads and it'll be easier to market them. Um, we have had a few really interesting projects looking at um, developing uh, business models uh, one led by Jim Simon, where he uh, trained farmers in Zambia on greenhouse production of seedlings. And they actually generated quite a lot of money. They had a large group of farmers involved. So each one of them didn't get a lot of income for themselves, but for the, the community, the village, where they were growing these seedlings, uh, they were being uh, very successful and they couldn't keep up with the demand from the uh, local growers. So that's just a quick couple of things. I'm going to be on the program again after lunch, and I'll have more time to talk about more uh, things that we do and how it fits into nutrition and our efforts in scale up. To learn more, please visit agrilinks.org and feedthefuture.gov.